What's up guys? Do you want to know how to fit a quick change differential to a chassis which no one else has done to before? Well, then this video might be for you. Because today we're going to show you the process we did uh, or had to make this winter quick change differential fit to my Mercedes CLK drift car that you see behind me. I decided to make this video uh, really because all of the videos I see regarding quick change is a little bit about how they work. And uh, then you see the guys who buy them, they just buy a subframe that's already re rebuilt. And uh, then they buy the differential, put it on the car and we'll go out on track. For me, it's a little bit more complicated. And I guess if you're in this video, you might have the same problem of running not the most, uh, the most common drift chassis and you want to maybe invest in a quick change. So, uh, what we're going to do in this video is show you all the steps that we went through. Uh, everything from uh, cutting up the subframe, finding out what kind of mounting solution we're going to have on this build. And also everything about measuring it out, making drawings and uh, how we ended up solving the problem for ourselves. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned and uh, enjoy the video. What's up guys? Today it's uh, Tuesday and uh, we're actually heading up to Westeros. <laughs> Unfortunately we're going in... <coughs> an electric car, but uh, yeah. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to save some money. So thank you to Victor for lending us the car uh, to get this trip a little bit more efficient. Uh, today we're heading up to uh, Westeros to meet up with uh, Linus uh, Brostedt from SVK. Uh, we're gonna meet, up, meet him up for some lunch uh, and then we're gonna do a pod episode for his pod, uh, Life of SVK. And after that uh, we're heading over to some guys here in uh, Halstahammar to uh, pick up some new parts for the CLK. So exciting day, expensive day, but it's gonna be good. So uh, let's get moving on the last stretch of, the dr of this drive. So, uh, so yeah, um, let's go. After we wrapped up the recording of the podcast, it was finally time to pick up the differential. After a quick checkup and a money transfer, it was uh, loaded into the car and we started heading home to Gothenburg. The next day, uh, I brought it down to the shop where I actually managed to surprise a few of the guys with the fact that we actually now own a quick change differential. This is an upgrade that we've been wanting for a really long time. So we didn't waste any time. Uh, we started removing our old differential right away. Uh, the current differential we were using was a E34540 differential. This was a welded one. And as you can see in the video here, the size difference is quite a big one. The first step in the fitting process was to cut up our spare subframe. Since the new differential is both taller and longer, we had to cut out a big section in the back of the subframe and also a small part of the front cross member. Then we took down the whole rear suspension, including the subframe. And at the same time, we put the old differential back into the subframe so we would be able to see how high the drive shaft hubs were located in our old setup. We also moved the subframe bushings over from the old subframe so we could get the spare one mounted on the car. The biggest challenge here is going to be to get the quick change as high as possible inside the chassis without having the problem of cutting out the whole floor of the car and still get clearance for the drive shafts. We began with planning out where we needed to cut the chassis to make sure that we cut as little materials out as possible. Then we made the necessary cuts so we could raise the quick change into the location we needed. Victor then came up with a brilliant idea to hang the differential from the top, which we did by bolting two brackets to the top bolts of the quick change, which we then suspended from a small frame that we had built inside of the trunk. This way we could adjust both the angle and the height much more precise and also get the suspension back on the car. By doing this we were able to get the car back on the ground and then we could put three guys on the bash bar to simulate the suspension travel. And our conclusion is that we have enough clearance to the ground and we could also see that our drive shafts clears the subframe. Now that we have decided the position, we need to pick what kind of mounting solution we are going to build. After doing some research into the subframe market for other chassis, we ended up choosing to build our subframe 
like the AGK S13 subframe you see here in the photo. They're set up with a bolted flange in the front and open ends in the back, looks very similar to what we are able to build on the CLK. And after some brainstorming and a bunch of measuring, I came up with these manual drawings. These were then brought up to Strömberg Sjöresvet in Sörte, who will help us cut these parts out. They helped me adjust my drawings a little bit, and then we got them transferred into their cutting software so we could start to cut out the final part. First up was the front mounting point, which I had decided to cut out from 4mm mild steel. And we also used the same material for the rear mounting points. Then we moved on to cutting out the flange that will be mounted to the quick change differential. This was instead cut in 6mm mild steel to add some extra stability. For the final step we also cut out two spacers in 10mm thick aluminium. These are meant to sit between the flange and the front mounting point of the subframe. We added these spacers to make sure that the front mounting plate will line up with the surface of the front cross member on the subframe. This will make it much easier to both position and weld the differential in the right place. And after about two hours we had it all cut out and we were back in the shop. This time around I actually took the time to deburr all of the sharp edges before I got the chance to test fit it all on the car. Luckily it bolted straight onto the differential, somehow I actually managed to get all of the measurements correctly and it all bolted up perfectly. Even the front mounting point lined up perfectly with the front surface of the subframe and it bolted up nicely against the flange on the differential. Truly satisfying to see your ideas turn into reality and solve the problem you have set out to fix from the beginning. So I really wanted to take the chance here to do a big shout out to Strömbergs who helped me to get this sorted with such a tight time frame. Make sure that you contact them if you are in need of any type of fabrication or other metalwork around the Gothenburg area. I will make sure to include their website in the description below. So with the front squared away we focused on the rear mounting points. If you paid attention in the beginning of the video you might remember seeing Victor measuring and cutting out the back of the subframe. This cut was made in the center and also with the same width as the differential's rear mounting points. We started out by adding 4 millimeters of space per side. This way we would be able to slide in the plates between the differential and the subframe. We also took the time to cut out some cardboard copies of the steel plates because this would make it much easier to adjust the shape of the plates and make them fit much quicker. And after some grinding we finally had the width dialed in and thanks to the cardboard pieces we also got the fitment perfect. Then we bolted on the plates onto the differential, double checked all of the measurements to make sure the differential still was centered in the subframe and then it was finally time to weld it all in place. We started out by tacking the rear plates into the subframe, then we did the same with the front mounting points and we also added some triangle supports to support the front brackets. With everything tacked in place we could finally remove the top support and also remove the frame of the chassis. The differential is finally attached to the subframe for the first time and next up was to take it all down and then move it over to the bench to make it easier to weld everything in place. Here you can see all of the reinforcements we added to the mounting points and with all of those in place it was time to finally weld it all together. I tried to take it all in small steps to make sure that the subframe didn't twist or distort from all of the heat. I think it actually took over an hour to actually get it fully welded. But uh, after letting it cool down a bit, uh, we put it back on the car to get it fixated into the original mounting points. Then we took the differential down and focused on closing up the hole which we had cut out in the front cross member. To seal this up, we cut out a small piece of a 5 inch tube and got it fitted out. We also added some end pieces and welded her up and I actually think that it turned out pretty good. Another thing that we also did but uh, forgot to film was that we added two pieces of steel rods going straight through the subframe on each side of the front mounting point. This was added to strengthen up the subframe a little bit because uh, we had taken away some of the strengths by cutting up the hole in the front. With the subframe pretty much finished up, we got it back down from the car, smoothing out some rough edges and we also got it painted in satin black. I'm really happy with how the subframe turned out and I'm somewhat excited to see how it will withstand my abusive driving style. So I'm a little bit curious on your thoughts. After watching the video and how we built the subframe, do you think we built it strong enough or do you think we will break it? Let me know in the comments below 
and we will find out what the future brings for this subframe. There we go. We have the quick change mounted officially to the car. Uh, we're not done yet, but uh, the biggest job is out of the way. Uh, so part two of this series will uh, be about fixing the prop shaft. Uh, we're going to fix the drive shaft and we're also going to seal up the chassis. We're going to build a box on top of the, the quick change and also seal up the space over here. So if you have any questions regarding uh, what we did in the video or how this differential work or anything like that, leave a comment below and I will try to answer as good as possible. So meanwhile, uh, hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends and uh, talk to you next time.